Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm here with the tribe and we are going to be making Boston buns, also known as Sally Luns. I was trying to look up if there was a difference between the two. When I was a kid, I always knew them as Boston buns. For the sake of not starting an argument, I'm just going to refer to them as both. This is great if you've got some leftover mashed potato. Now, we need this as smooth as smooth can be. So, this potato has been boiled up and put through my stick blender. I'm also going to sieve it. We're wanting one cup of potato to go in here. And then you'll sort of have to use the spoon to force it through. Because the very, very last thing you want when you're biting into a nice sort of a sweet bun is a, suddenly a lump of potato. <laughs> We need about one cup of sugar in with this. Yep. I want to do some mixing. All right, you can do a bit of mixing okay. each. There we go. That's that's sort of almost looking quite quite liquidy. So we want two cups of self-raising flour. So if you want to put one of those in a half a cup each and I'll put in a half a cup. A pinch of salt, I will do that. Make sure the salt and the flour are mixed in together. And then we'll heat it all into a mountain. Bit of a hollow. Right. That looks pretty. It does. Now with the raisins, some recipes say put a whole cup, some recipes say put half a cup. So, because I have three children and a one, one quarter cup measure here, they can put a quarter of a cup in each. <laughs> so I'm going to go, so I'm going to go for about three quarters of a cup of raisins. And yes, you may eat a raisin each. We're going to Mix that all together, shall I do that? Me! To preheat the oven on bake at 180 degrees. Who's clever enough to do that? Me! At the moment that's still looking quite crumbly, so we need to add just enough milk so it starts coming together as a dough ball. Start off with a quarter of a cup of milk, see how that goes. Oh. Just gonna, gonna put a little bit of flour on there just so I can get that a bit of a mix around without getting my hands too sticky. I'm just going to shape this into sort of a, a bit of a nice little domey type shape. I'm gonna put that in the oven for between 30 to 35 minutes and in the meantime I will work on the icing. Okay, I've just left that to cool for a few minutes. In case you're wondering, if I have got another one on the go there. It's Father's Day here tomorrow and I'm, I usually make morning tea for my dad so I'm making him one too. Alright, now icing. Confession time, this is going to be my second attempt at the icing. Can I just say, traditionally, well, I don't know whether it's traditionally white or pink icing. You see both quite regularly. Um, but I'm going to go with pink because just childhood memories, it was always pink. So I'm going to go pink, despite all my kids protesting. We don't want pink, we want it turquoise. No, I'm sorry, it's not turquoise. Olivia's sticking her tongue out at me for not making it turquoise. Want one and a half cups of icing sugar. Want about two tablespoons of butter, or I'm just going to use cheap margarine. You want this at about room temperature. That's where I went a little bit wrong with my last batch of icing as well. It came out a little bit too runny because I was not organised enough <laughs> to take my take my butter out of the fridge, and so it, I ended up I put it in the microwave for ten seconds, and it went a little bit too runny. So I have this butter at room temperature, and. Then you want to just add one to two tablespoons of milk just to get it to the right consistency. So I'm just going to add one tablespoon for now. I've actually got a dessert spoon here, but 
you get the idea. I'm going to overfill it a bit. subtle pink. So what you want I'll pretend subtle. that I'll pretend that I intended on doing that. It's not quite cooked in the middle. That is pretty good. Look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. Now, that first one that you saw us make, it came out absolutely perfect, or so I thought. There was a, a strip of raw stuff right in the middle. It just needed a bit of extra cooking. Now, the second one, I sort of made at the same time as that one. However, as soon as I sliced that first one and saw that it was raw in the middle, I thought, right, get that other one heated back up again. And because I let it cool a little bit, and then tried re-cooking it, it just came out solid. It came out, <laughs> but both of those, we still ate, somehow they have vanished. This one has come out perfect. So I actually cooked it for 40 minutes, not 30 minutes, and then I just let it cool down on the tray. Stop trying to stand on tiptoes, Olivia. You're tall enough without tiptoes. Mm. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Mm. That's quite sweet on the top, actually. Mm. It's not really spicy. It's meant to be. <laughs> nice. It's awesome. The grey, the um, In inside is yes. actually quite um sweeter than normal. Well, it's sweeter than normal bread. Yeah. Because it's that's what it is. It's the bun nice side and light from... and fluffy. Mm. It's still got plenty of consistency to it. <laughs> the raisins add that little bit of juiciness that it needs. Mm. No, I mean it's nice and sweet. That I'm is awesome. I'm about to finish it now. <laughs> you do what you want. I like do. that coconut on there. I don't know why I don't like it on here. Mm. Just as well, because that was my last bit of coconut. That was almost the last of the raisins. So yay, I don't have to do it again. <laughs> Actually, I will do, just not in the near future. I think we've been all Boston bunned out. No, 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 no. You're Sally doing loves. this again, Mum. <laughs> there we go. Hit You're like. doing 100 tomorrow. Apparently I'm making another 100 tomorrow. Hit like, leave me a comment, hit subscribe, come to my place tomorrow. Apparently there's going to be 100 Boston buns. I'm kidding. Don't turn up to my house. And we'll catch you next week. Bye.